new art to honor our nation's history and heritage. For nearly 70 years, stained glass windows in Washington's National Cathedral depicted Confederate leaders. They've been gone now for six years, and this week, new windows telling a different story were unveiled. Adriana Diaz got an early look at the new designs and their new meaning. If the walls could talk at Washington's National Cathedral, they'd recount some of our nation's most profound moments. The best father a son or daughter could have. Where we're reminded our leaders are only human. But these walls have also upheld a stain in stained glass. Tributes to Confederate generals Robert E. Lee, Thomas Stonewall Jackson, and their flag. They were removed in 2017, and this past week, their replacements were revealed. I couldn't miss it. <laughs> Wanted to be here to witness it. I've never seen anything like it. So I'm like, wow. <laughs> it's a celebration of the black experience, a still image that captures the kinetic energy of protesting in the pursuit of justice. It is pretty brilliant, pretty bright. It's glowing. It's the work of renowned Chicago artist Carrie James Marshall, whose pieces can go for millions. His price for this? $18.65, a nod to slavery's end. I think these windows simply announce themselves to the passerby in a way that most of the other windows in the cathedral don't. Also, unlike the other windows here, there's a wheelchair, no faces, and... In a church, you're so used to looking up at the windows and seeing white skin. And seeing black skin here, it's almost like you have to do a double take. I don't think these windows exclude anybody. I think the activity and what they're engaged in is something that everybody can partake in. There's a different light that comes out of that bay than comes out of any of the other bays here at the cathedral. Randy Hollerith, dean of the National Cathedral, says not everyone agreed with the change. There was a lot of resistance that we were removing history. Part of what we tried to do was to have those conversations and then just to know that we were doing what we thought was absolutely the best thing. Below are words by poet Elizabeth Alexander, each day who performed at President Obama's first inauguration. For a lot of people, poetry goes over their heads. I do know that a lot of people get nervous around poetry, but poetry is just words and we all have them. <laughs> <laughs> the final line of the poem, may this portal be where the light comes in, that can illuminate the beauty of the past and also sometimes the untruths of the past. Funeral services are held at Washington Cathedral. Their art will live on in a place that serves as a spiritual home for the nation, where Dr. Martin Luther King gave his last sermon. It's the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends toward justice. A permanence that leaves this poet speechless. They will outlive me by a very, 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 very long measure. And what that reminds me of is the power of art. And what that means is actually beyond words for me right now. Carrie, I see you nodding. <laughs> to really con make a contribution to the transformation of the nation towards the goals that it had established and set for itself, liberty and justice for all. I don't think I could have asked for anything more meaningful to have done in my life. For CBS Saturday Morning, Adriana Diaz, Washington. I love how much he charged. Yeah. $18.65. Absolutely. Yeah. And they are very proud of the gesture, and they see it as a gesture of being opened, and um, it, is, it is wonderful to see. Yeah, they're beautiful, too. Absolutely beautiful, yeah. not just the message that they send. Absolutely.